So for this project, first I want to uh, show you how to get around in Vectorworks, especially if you have not uh, used this program before or if you're unfamiliar with some of the 3D tools. So if you're very comfortable with 3D tools, you may not need to watch this video. Uh, first off, let's talk about the layers that I have set up. I've gotten rid of everything that you really everything except what you need. Um, we have our theater architecture, which probably you won't actually need that one. Um, the visibility of the layers can be found right here um, in this navigation palette. Um, if you do not have this navigation palette on your on, on your screen here, then chances are you just need to go up to the window drop down box, go to palettes, and turn it on. So um, if you don't have that check mark by the palette, then that means it's not visible on your on your page. So go ahead and select it, make sure it's visible and it should appear. And in that navigation palette, we can see our layers in this little tab right here. Um, other layers, other, other tabs include classes, and we have sheet layers, viewports, um, so on. For this project, you should really only need to deal with the design layers. Uh, we have our ground plan, which I have created actually a 3D model. Um, I am in a top view, so that's why it sort of looks like a ground plan with some with some minor problems because I don't have the right symbols in for doors, but that's okay for this project. Um, and then we also have the 3D theater, which is just the Cogra theater built up in 3D. So this button that I pushed here, this is the flyover tool. This one allows you to literally sort of turn the model around. This works in three dimensions here. So you can get a good look at the different parts of the model. So I'm going to turn this, um, turn this layer invisible. Let's look at the ground plan and we'll do the same thing. So on here you can see that we have a um, series of walls. We have some curtains, borders, legs in there. Um, if I zoom in just a little bit, and if you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can kind of just scroll in and out. If you're using a laptop like I am, um, you know, two fingers will scroll in and out. Um, and then uh, if I use my selection tool over here, I can actually click on things and select different elements. So this one I just selected is a wall that's in the background. Um, so you can kind of see that when I stop flying over, you can see where it sort of lands. Um, there's some curtains again, and then we have just a series of walls, a couple of doors, and a window in here right now. So to get back to a top view, top plan view, uh, there you should have a drop down menu in the in the top bar up here of your vector so just go to top plan and we're there and then to make the 3d theater appear just make that eyeball visible all right one other thing that i want to make sure you understand is the unified view you may or may not have this button right here um, selected if you do not have this selected then your layers aren't going to talk to each other, essentially. So even though my 3D layer is visible and my ground plan layer is active, if I use the flyover tool, it's only going to fly over the ground plan, the model, the 3D model. So it's not going to fit together. So you want to make sure that that unified view is selected so that all of your layers work in conjunction with each other. Okay? Um, the only time unified view isn't going to work for you is if for some reason you have a layer that's a different scale that you want to see. Um, unified view will only show layers that have the same scale. So if you change the scale for whatever reason, um, the unified view won't work. So we're in quarter inch scale right now and if you can't see your scale marker on here um, all of these tools are turned on by a little triangle button 
on the very far right side of that top bar and you can turn in turn on all of those things so uh, you can see what I have turned on um, it's quite a few I like to have the um, the layer scale usually by default this layer scale um, button is not selected so if for some reason you don't see that and you'd like to be able to change it quickly so I just turned it off you see how it disappeared and the only way to change the scale if I ever wanted to was to go up into the somewhere in here I don't even know where it is anymore because I always keep it um, I always keep that little button turned on um, you may also if you have uh, if you have the resolution of your screen kind of big um, some of these things may not fit on there so you kind of have to decide what is important for you to have on the page here all right so different views that we have um, we already talked about top plan view uh, this is always going to be a wireframe view uh, which means that it's not going to it's just going to show up as lines there's not going to be any kind of um, any kind of you know different line weights things aren't going to be hidden by anything there's nothing that um, looks particularly solid in the wireframe uh, front view is literally going to be a straight on front view and you can also look at the right side um, bottom although the stage floor is going to get in your way um, I like right isometric that sometimes that really helps me to uh, just see the 3d forms and then I use the flyover just to get me a little bit different view on there um, but typically I'm going top plan or front or right isometric just so I can select different things now the next thing we want to talk about are the rendering modes and uh, you can find that if you again you have that little button I have the render mode short version turned on it looks kind of like a little teapot up in this right corner if you don't have that or if you don't have room on your on your menu bar up here the rendering modes can also be found under view and then rendering and they're all the same ones over here so depending on what your top bar looks like you may have to look for the rendering modes under view so I'm going to start with this OpenGL and if we select this you can see that it makes everything um, that solid look solid everything if you've applied a color to it it's going to look like it has color and eventually we're going to be adding textures to this not quite yet I just want to show you um, in this mode you can um, use the flyover tool it's going to maintain its uh, sort of render um, system on here it's pretty nice just to get a quick easy look at the model um, in a solid type of form okay um, the next one I want to talk about is this fast render work so this one takes a little bit more time to render you see down at the bottom it's sort of looking at the um, you, you get kind of a render mode time frame on here um, and with this one um, this one is it's going to give you a little bit more detail although there's a bit of a fuzziness on those edges I'm not sure why at this point but I'm sure we'll discover it um, it starts to show lighting a little bit more um, and after we do insert some lighting instruments in our in our models here um, OpenGL this this mode here can only show I think I think it's six lights at a time um, this OpenGL also simplifies textures a lot so it's um, it's good for a quick look but when you really want to see what things are looking like you're going to use one of these um, render works settings here so that's the fast one final quality just means it's going to be even better probably clean up some of those edges of those lines that we looked at before I think the only lights I have turned on in this is just sort of the overall ambient light that's why it's we're kind of getting that shading going on on there all right that rendering is complete 
So you can see how much better it looks. So it cleans it up. It's got a lot more detail into it. So that's good. And then um, with custom render works, you can actually set up um, some uh, specific qualities. So right now it's already had some um, qualities attached to it. So we can go down here and go to this custom render works options. Um, now in here, there's different options for uh, turning things on. There's gonna be times, um, this displacement mapping is, um, there are certain textures that include this displacement mapping. And hopefully we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but it really has to do with like making the object have a physical texture, like a three-dimensional texture to it, not just the um, sort of an image of three-dimensional texture. It gives it a true three-dimensional texture. So right now, if I clicked on that, you're not going to see any difference. So we're not going to mess around with that right now. Um, and again, we can turn on, um, you probably want to turn the quality levels up a little bit on some of these. And you'll find as you work through this that the higher the quality, the longer it takes to render. And also the larger your file is going to be. So you have to kind of just decide what, that, what that's going to be. Um, and you can update, you know, individual elements here as well. So the ones that I'm usually working with, I start with OpenGL just to see the basic overall, um, overall shape. And again, when you change the view around, um, you, you still have that OpenGL texture. If you're in a uh, different mode like this fast render works, and again, we have to wait for it to render. If I change my view, I have to wait for it to render again. So every time you make even the slightest little move, it's going to re-render. So that can get, especially once these uh, files start to get really complicated and big, you know, you'd be waiting several minutes um, for that to complete rendering. Um, that being said, if you do have a, if you realize very quickly that what you're, what you're trying to see is not correct, if you hit escape twice, should work, sometimes it works, um, uh, hit escape twice, it should stop the render, and then if you just go back to a wireframe or the OpenGL, then um, you can get out of that. That, that cycle can get very frustrating um, if you're in that, in that uh, render works or final quality render works or custom render works. It can get very frustrating when you just accidentally shift it and it's like it takes 10 minutes for it to render. Just before you do anything else, hit escape a couple times. It should stop and then make sure you go back to either wireframe or OpenGL. Okay. Um, next, I want to uh, talk about perspective for just a second. So if we go to a front view, I usually start in a front view. And uh, many of us go to this right isometric view and say, look, we're in a uh, perspective view. Well, no, not really. And even just taking the uh, flyover tool and, um, I mean, yes, you can see the shapes a little bit more better better than you can in a front view but if we change our um, setup here from orthogonal to I usually go to normal perspective now we can actually see some perspective because in a real situation if we were an audience sitting in the theater we're not going to see the tops of the walls, right? We're going to we're going to have our vantage point is going to be more. Well, really, we're not going to see a lot of the floor. Um, we might be sitting in a house left. We might be sitting in house right. But if you remember your rules of perspective, the objects that are closest to you are going to appear taller, and then as they get farther away, they recede towards that horizon line. So um, in this, you can use the flyover tool to kind of set that um, for yourself. Um, if you use the, if you hit the shift key, or not, I'm sorry, the space bar key, um, see how it turns into a hand and you can just kind of move things around. 
Um, that's a very helpful little tip to know. Um, so if you click on this light bulb tool, there's some other uh, 3D tools to work with. So you can actually walk through. So if you want, to, want it to appear like you're more on stage, um, if you're ever in a design situation and you want the director to kind of be able to stand on stage and see what things feel like, from, an, from that point of view, you can actually show them these things. So, um, so the walkthrough tool is kind of fun. And Vectorworks, just as a side note, can do animations. So you can actually um, create like a 3D walkthrough of things. And if we go far enough, it will take us through the door where I am now. Um, it's a little hard to tell. If you go towards the um, towards the bottom of the screen with this tool, it takes you further away. If you go towards the top, it brings you in closer. But uh, now you can see that we're back behind the wall. So just kind of fun little tools. You can play with it a little bit. Um, go back through, and now we're back on stage again. And the audience would be out there. Now, I, I don't necessarily play with these tools a lot. Um, they're just kind of kind of something fun to play with sometimes. So I'm going back to a front view. I'm still in perspective. And there we are again. Um, these other two tools uh, are a little bit finicky um, and or redundant. Uh, the translate tool is just going to sort of um, kind of, it, it's not going to rotate anything, it's just kind of keeping everything straight up and down. It just gives you the opportunity to sort of slide it one way or the other or up and down. Um, but if you hold down the space bar, that will do almost exactly the same thing. So I very rarely go to this translate tool. And the rotate tool is just, it's it's a little bit wonky. It's It starts to um, do some pretty crazy things with just barely moving things around. So I really prefer the flyover tool. Um, you can see that the, the rotate tool has gotten me tilted on here. It, it's not a good view. <laughs> Using that rotate tool is, is very rarely for theater. This is what we want to do. Now, if you're creating some sort of video for something else, want to do an animation, um, you might get some interesting effects by using that rotate tool. But the ones I'm typically using are just flyover. Uh, I'll occasionally use that walkthrough just to sort of help visualize, or I just hold the space bar down so I can shift my view ever so slightly. Back to a front view. Okay, so using your, your tools here, um, again, top. And when I, as soon as I go back to top plan, it sets it back to the orthogonal 2D plan. So if I go back to front, it's no longer in perspective and you have to reset that. All right, um, I think that is most of those tools. So pay attention to what layers are turned on and what layers active. Uh, again, we probably won't need to deal with the theater architecture layer at this point. It's going to be mostly the ground plan and 3D theater. And eventually we will add a layer for lighting. But that's not, I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video. So I hope that made sense. Um, I hope you have a chance to play around with that and um, get to know just the basic controls of the Vectorworks file.